just about all set up here at lovely Old Bedford Village. I'll give everybody a little view of the camp. I need to get dressed still. The dark box is set up and I do need to set up inside the tent so that I have a place to sleep tonight. The table is not ready yet. My varnishing table is not ready yet, but the camera head brace and signage is and I think we have maybe an hour 45 minutes before spectators come through so I'm Larry Mylon I am the safety marshal here at Old Bedford Village's annual Wild West weekend this event if you're a reenactor you're a living historian and you're what we affectionately refer to as edutainers you have got to come to this event. It's a, a great event for the more authentic reenactors so that they can show uh, a lot of what they have been able to accumulate over time. It's for people who want to improve their impressions. There are people here like John Milliker who take a real period image of you, which if you're a reenactor and living a story and is a fantastic thing. This is a tremendous event for spectators. One of the reasons for that is not only are there a lot of things for spectators to see, but we have things where the spectators can actually participate. In particular, we're very proud of what we have developed here. We refer to as the kids posse. The sheriff, not me, the sheriff, Bob Alexander, gathers up all the little kids. He swears them in with an oath, including mind your mother and father. And he leads them on a posse mission to recover the outlaws and put them in jail. Keep an eye on your schedule because the end of June, usually the last weekend of June, is Old Bedford Village's Wild West Weekend. We want to see you here. We'll come find you if you're not. Well, that's about a wrap for day one and we had a good day had a lot of great people made a lot of plates we've got our dark box all packed up we've got all the chemistry locked up everything is cinched down and tightened we're supposed to get some wind tonight which is good hopefully we'll have a nice cool sleep and we're supposed to have rain tomorrow so let's hope that that doesn't happen and just see see what happens I've survived the night. 
a little cold. <clears throat> got a little cold last night. I had to get the quilt out. I don't know what it, what it went down to, but it, it was damp and cold. We've got a storm coming through, but just won't have enough time to get the tent down. The thought was to take the tent down, keep the rain fly up, get everything in the car we, we needed to. Everything's already kind of dewy this morning and that needs to dry. So, you know, either way, I'm gonna have to dry tents out. Man, gnats are bad this morning. So why not? Let's just roll the dice. We've got high winds and rain coming. Well, I'm all set up. I think it's almost ready to let all the spectators in. I've got, I've got two, uh, I've got two cowboys coming a little bit to get a tin type made before it gets kind of crazy. And honestly, there's a lot of weird forecasts. Some one said rain this morning, heavy winds and rain this afternoon. But I mean, the clouds are this. It's beautiful blue skies. Yeah, I see some clouds over there. Well, we're in a little bit of a rain delay. I was able to get all our tables in, camera in, the, the head brace, the sign's still out there, but that's lacquered, it's fine. But hopefully this storm blows over pretty quickly. We can get back up. There it goes. <laughs> this is the very last plate of the day. Our first quarter plate. Quarter plates are really nice. If you got just one person, good detail. But typically, if there's any more than two people or if somebody's really worried about the detail, we, we definitely recommend them to half plate. But I kind of like shooting the quarter plates as well. Nice and warm. This is the last step, the varnish step. Roll that around the plate. And then spill it on my pants. Always when I'm filming. Always when I'm filming do I spill varnish on myself. But that's okay. Wow, it turned out really good. And then heat it up. Thankfully, and I don't want to spoil it, I don't want to jinx myself, but thankfully the rain really held out. And our canvas is still, it's not dry, but it's not damp. And we're going to definitely need to dry it out entirely again, even though we do have another event this weekend coming up at the George Spangler Farm for the Gettysburg anniversary. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And, and they treat us so nice there. The, the visitor center buses people in left and right. It's, it's such a cool time. That turned out really well. But it's nice making a quarter plate. It's a little bit smaller plate at the end. It's almost time to close up and we are really lucky that the rain decided to stay away for us. Going home with mostly dry canvas. Well, that's about it. Kind of sad, kind of sad leaving Bedford, but we'll be back here next year. And we're also going to be coming for the Labor Day weekend Civil War encampment that's happening as well. And I can't tell you how much fun we've had this weekend. Had a little bit of rain today, a little bit of a rain and high wind scare, but everything turned out to be just fine. We made a ton of plates, talked to a ton of great people and made a lot of new friends as well. And I really want to thank the Wild West event for having us back. Old Bedford Village for having us back and everybody who came by to see us, whether or not you had a plate made, saw a plate, 
or just saw some of our examples, I really appreciate you coming out and hope to see you next year. See ya.